Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with RealAgriculture.com. We are at Farm Tech here in Edmonton, Alberta, and I have here with me Curtis Rempel, who is the Vice President of the Canola Council of Canada. How's it going today? Very well, thank you. So lately we've been talking a lot about um, messaging and how to talk to the public, and lately, especially with things such as club root and black leg, and how, how do you unify the industry? What can we say about that? Oh, that's a good question. I th- in terms of, um, so part of the Canola Council of Canada approach is, of course, we're a, we're a value chain organization. So it's li- growers, life science companies, all the way through. Um, everybody ha- you know, has, a, um, ha- has a, strong, um, a strong ethos, I guess, to you know, uh, increase yields, increase profitability, increase sustainability, reduce production risk. Okay, so that's what we're all about. Um, t- t- as part of that, um, agronomic best management practices sort of anchor everything. And um, and so I think you're part of the question you're looking to address here is how do we how do we communicate best management practices um, uh, uh, with clarity and uniformity across the industry so farmers are not ge- every, farmers and commercial agronomists are not getting confused okay um, so the first thing the first thing that the council really focuses on in uh, in terms of uh, of that messaging is um, what does the science say so. Um, you know, uh, we the grower organizations, the council. There's other funding organizations. We fund research, looking at uh, gaps that we need to address, etc. Um, the research for formulates the best management practices. Okay, and then often the research also gives you a good feeling for what kind of knowledge and technology transfer tools you need to use, or which medium you might need to use uh, to tra- to translate or transfer the the message. Uh, translate the knowledge, I guess. Uh, and so, and as you know, there's lots of different tools from social media to our canola encyclopedia, every, uh, many different tools. Um, the messaging then, um, we tr- what we try to do is bring in industry experts, whether they're scientists, um, provincial extension people, and also industry, like uh, commercial agronomy, um, plant breeders, uh, marketing people, etc. And we try to work through what we call steering committees. We have a fertility steering committee, club root, black leg, et cetera, and settle on what are the best, what are the, what does the science say? What are the best management practices? How do we communicate that? And can we all agree, uh, or what messaging can we all agree on that we can be unified around? And if we have to disagree on some things because we're not sure of the science or there's still some controversy, et cetera, where can we at least, uh, where can we disagree? And then um, try to uh, leave the disagreements outside of the main messaging, right? Like 90% of the da- of the message is correct. 10% might be slightly nuanced or whatever. And can we focus on the 90% so the grower can make the right decision? So are you working with uh, the commercial agronomists as well in order to make sure you're together on we, that? Yep, that's become a real a, a, a point of emphasis for the Canola Council. Uh, we, had, we did a, um, we had sort of a, a th- two... Th- a little over two years ago now, we had a, uh, what they co- we call a strategic priority review. And we started uh, thinking about uh, a train-the-trainer model, whereby we're starting to uh, still stay focused on growers. But the commercial agronomists are the, really the eyes and ears of farmers, right? And so um, if we can get our messaging, uh, if, if we can align our messaging with commercial agronomy, they're, the, they're sort of the, la- they're the last touch point for the farmer. And uh, if, if our messaging is in, al- in alignment uh, with what they're, you know, sort of the advice, th- the talking points they're having with the farmer, we, we get a lot of traction. And it eliminates a lot of confusion, okay? And so uh, a lot of, we're spending more and more and more time, and we're also thinking our way through how do we work together as commercial agronomy, life science, fer- the fertilizer industry, et cetera. Some of it is, you know, maybe through 4R nutrient or whatever, but how can we get together and develop the messages together and figure out the tools together instead of the Canola Council developing the tools here, use them. Can we have more give and take around, okay, what kind of videos are we going to produce? Um, can we produce them together, um, utilizing some of their expertise, their staff, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a more of a holistic thing. Yep. So any any movement on that, I guess? That 
Yeah, I, I think uh, it's start. I mean, we're really sort of we started into this probably the last half of, of, of 2019, where we really started thinking our way into you know what contacts do we have, uh, what how do we what can we do to sort of think about um, um, uh, unified messaging, etc. And we're probably what we're probably going to do is 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 pick a few focus areas. Probably one of them is going to be that for our nutrient because it's so it's such a key to profitability and sustainability, et cetera. And we have other messaging as well. But so it's, I think we're, you know, it's early steps. We're starting to get some traction. We're, the big thing is we're getting some really good feedback from our commercial partners in terms of what they're, you know, how they, how they interact. And of course, every, you know, acres have just, you know, almost the same number of people with 7.5, you know, now 20 million acres as we were with 7.5 million canola acres, right? Or maybe fewer people. Now we have social media that helps, yep. but you can get a lot of crap, crap going on social media yeah, too, Yeah, well, right? that's exactly right. So, and confusion, so. Yep, and I think that's that's exactly just unifying it is, yep. is really what's key. Yep. So moving into 2020, what can producers look forward to from the Canola Council? Canada? Yeah, that's another good, uh, so yeah, 2019 was challenging year everybody knows that and yeah. so we're trying to look for you know a good start for 2020 um so uh, the things we're sort of focusing on at the canola council um are um are um increasing um emergence uh, or germination or, or, or stand survival from 50 or 60 percent to 75 percent so that's around stand establishment, and of course, getting your crop off to a good start. Uh, second one is keeping club root levels uh, below, det- keeping club root to levels below detection. Okay. Third one would be it, uh, enrolling in a, implementing a 4R nutrient plan for increased profitability, reduced risk, increased yield, uh, keeping your sites on black lake. And then something that's a little more out, you know, sort of uh, longer term focused and, uh, um, a little more esoteric, start thinking about uh, biodiversity and its impact on profitability. So wild spaces, wetlands, we've been doing a bunch of research on what the value of ecosystem services is to growers if you keep, and of course there's a carbon sequestration component, etc. And so if you have a couple of seconds, I'll run you, maybe give you a few more details on some of them. You betcha. Work? Okay. So if we're thinking about... Um, uh, um, uh, well, I'll start with a stand to step because it's going to be front and center, right? Yep. We're going to be seeding sooner than we oh, can possibly yeah. imagine. Yeah. And so, um, going from that that uh, going from that fifty per or sixty percent survival to seventy five percent survival, uh, we you know it's basically plant one to get one, right? And yep. with canola, you're kind of planting two seeds to get one: corn, wheat. Everybody's kind of plant. You expect to get one plant for every seed you plant, right? Yep. And so for us, it, there's a couple of, you know, it, it's basically pay attention to your seed, your your uh, soil, your, your field conditions. And of course, last year is going to be challenging. It's going to be ruts, trash, et cetera. So you got to work your way through that. Secondly, set targets, set realistic targets. And you can use our canola seed calculator to do that. We're targeting five to eight plants per foot squared. Uh, you have to determine what your mortality is going to be. We think, you know, for now, start with that 50 to 60%, and then you work backwards, and it'll give you your seeding rate using the seed calculator. Um, then pay attention to seeding. Uh, your planting is important, and right? And so that would be uh, good uh, seed soil separation. Um, depth, half an inch to half to one inch. If you're going deeper than that, then you have to be incredibly confident that every seed is at exactly at the right depth so you know it, there's the there's some research that says sometimes going to moisture if it's a little bit below an inch or something like that you're maybe okay but then you have to be everything has to really work well from there on in protect your stand and then reevaluate in fall and then i think um from for the club root uh, and i'll probably s- stop there but the club root um sort of to keep levels below detection um first of all we got we have to get a re I think every canola grower, whether you have club root or not, we have to work towards a, a three-year rotation, right? A two-year break. Two-year break, if you're looking at all the evidence, uh, it really uh, you're really starting to reduce risk and reduce spore loads. Uh, secondly, that it's a patch disease, and if you're scouting well, you often find the patches in the field early. If you can grass over those patches so you're not dragging, not driving over them 
in your non-canola year. What happen, tends to happen is you forget where the f- patches were when you're planting your cereals and your peas, etc., and you're moving dirt around, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and your patch keeps growing. So if you can kind of grass it off, delineate it, it's, it's, a, it's an enforced biosecurity and enforced rotation. And then the last one is, uh, is, is uh, besides crop rotation, deploy your resistance properly. Yep. So yep. that's kind of seems like at. it's just getting those boots on the ground is yep. the big one for sure. Yep, I think scout, you know, scout, scout, scout. Yep. If you don't have time to scout, there are so many really good commercial agronomists. It's the best dollar you can in invest in, I think. And have somebody do it for you. And at least you know. You can start quantifying, right? You, y- if you want to manage, you have to measure. If you're not measuring, you really can't manage. Yeah. And so... You bet. Hey, thanks for coming on and thanks again. I hope you have a great rest of your farm tech. Yeah, thank you very much.